What is up guys, HF Masters here. Today we're doing our review on the 71713 Empire Dragon. The set will retail for $30 and it comes with 286 pieces. On the front of the box here you can see the set and the three figures and on the back of the box you can just see all of the functions. The Empire Dragon is a pretty solid build. In terms of the length of it you can see that it is pretty similar to the Stormbringer. It is a little bit shorter but it is also cheaper so it is a fairly sizable thing and there also is a pretty fair amount of details especially for the price of the set. So starting off with the legs since this is one of the more detailed areas it is covered in stickers and this is a set which a lot of the detailing is 100% stickers. There are a lot of stickers in this set, but this is also a set where I feel like if you really want to get the details out of it, you have to put the stickers on it. This is one of the sets that I would say for those that normally would skip out on stickers, you, sh you shouldn't on this one. This set, 100% I feel like the stickers really, really kind of make it, and they make it a whole lot better by getting in those extra bits of detailing. So the leg here, fairly simple articulation wise, up and down, side to side, and these feet, which they are brick built, which I guess they discontinued that small Hero Factory Beast Foot piece because this is basically uh, emulating that, but it's just a little bit weird because it looks kind of blocky. So, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the look, but it's fine. These toes also, you can articulate them, you can move them up and down just a little bit. And behind the leg, similar to the Green Ninja Mech Dragon, this also has a small little booster, so I guess you could just kind of emulate flying with that since this doesn't actually have wings or anything, but it still has these little boosts, so you can see how it would be flying around based on that. These hind legs are pretty simple. They move up and down, left and right. They do everything you want it to do. The feet are the same story here, just same thing. Pretty good as far as articulation goes all around here. The head is a pretty interesting case on this one. This is one of the brick built heads, but I think they've actually done a much better job than they have recently as far as that goes. So they do have this printed eyepiece right there. That's a simple 2x2 two two brick. It's printed on both sides and it's symmetrical. You can see the same thing on both sides of the heads. I think that looks great, brings in some nice details. They also use some simple pieces like right here. This is a minifigure ski piece that they use there to bring just a little bit more detailing. From a front angle, it also looks pretty solid, I and mean, there are some nice sticker detailings on the very top, and there also are a bunch of little just adjustable and movable parts of this head. So on the top here, you have these kind of horn pieces, which you can move side to side, and you can also move them up and down like this. And there is also this sword piece in the middle, which can move up and down, and I mean, technically you can rotate this, but... That's not really like a big thing. And then of course, like per usual, there is a jaw which moves up and down and they have this little trans red piece which I guess kind of resembles a tongue but also in a sort of digital kind of way. It also is worth noting that this next section is also done really, really well. So you can move this down pretty much all the way to the ground. You can see it's literally touching the ground. You can stick it way up like this if you wanted to, and you still get a fair amount of articulation moving side to side from this mixel ball joint in the front. So that's just very simple stuff, but really key stuff as well. And it's just done great here. But now let's talk about this torso because this torso is going to be the part that kind of makes or breaks it for a lot of people because this is a $30 dragon and what that means is that to be able to make a $30 dragon at some point you have to cut down on the detailing and the overall build to make it fit that price point and where they've really done that here is in this torso section. Now me personally, I don't mind this at all, I think it looks pretty good. But for some people, this is going to be a little bit of an issue because this is a very thin torso. It is just two studs wide, which I guess there is technically a little bit of detailing in these Nexonite shields sticking out from the side. So if you really wanted to, I guess you can make an argument. Two and a half studs wide. That's very, very thin at the end of the day. For some people, that's just going to be too little. And I can see where that is. But for me personally, this is not an issue at all, especially because... They actually designed it pretty well with this cockpit section. They have these two slow pieces, which kind of makes a gradual decrease into the thinner section of the torso. And 
it just works out really well the way they've done that. So I don't really see any issues here. The actual biggest issue would be that there is a small little gap right up here in the middle between the slope piece and the actual bottom of the body. So that's the only real issue that I have as far as the torso goes. But for some people, it's gonna be a little bit too thin. So I guess that could be kind of awkward. I don't think it's a big deal though. But the cockpit section itself is pretty simple. There isn't a whole lot of detailing here. These slope pieces do have a sticker right up there. There is a small little console piece in the middle, which is also a sticker. And there is this kind of, I guess, visor in the front, which you can adjust a little bit. That's just, again, small bits of detailing. But I think the more important thing here is that they do have these two little adjustable flaps that do have stud shooters. So you just press it down and it launches forward. And it does come with extra studs, but I think it's very key to note that because these little flaps are adjustable, it makes it blend in with the legs really well and what would otherwise be a pretty awkward gap. So it's just, again, small little detail that makes it that much better. Also, one last thing quick to note here is that these two spike pieces are both adjustable and this tail is fully adjustable on mixel ball joints. So you can just kind of move it wherever you want it to go. It does pretty much everything. And also one minor thing here is that this ball joint is kind of sticking out on the end of the tail. Again, this is just a little bit of a case where because these parts are color locked, they opted to keep this color scheme consistent instead of switching this to a light gray piece to not have that ball joint here. It's just a bit of a trade-off. I am personally fine with it though. This set comes with three minifigures being Lloyd, Emperor Unagami, and Kai. So starting off first off with Emperor Unagami, he is not exclusive to this set, but he is the big bad guy villain, and for a $30 set, this is a really nice inclusion. But the figure itself is pretty solid, there's some nice printing all the way around. He has two faces, the first one is a simple, just a blue one, and the second one is like a red angry face. I think both of those look fine, pretty solid figure, glad to get him in such a cheap set. Now Kai here is very interesting, this is a pretty big departure from the typical ninja thing they've been doing, so right up on the top there they have these health bars because they're in a video game, so that's the thing. They also have this new video game sword hilt thing, uh, I've been calling them digi swords, but I don't know what the actual name is for that, but digi swords, that's the thing we're going with. They also do have uh, two faces, one of them is like this digital face, and then the other one is just a simple regular Kai face, and I do believe this is actually a new uh, face for Kai, so that's cool to see. And then also one last thing to note is that the whole shoulder setup thing that holds the uh, swords, that's also a new mold. So Lloyd, very similar to Kai, he has the same sort of sword thing and also the whole uh, sword siege thing. He has, again, some nice prints and two alternate faces. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is a new face for Lloyd as well. But that is pretty much it for the minifigures. Pretty solid selection. And also, uh, one last quick thing to note here. This isn't really a minifigure thing, but the set does come with this little holder thing for one of the key tanas. That is, a, that is a pun on key and katana, in case you were wondering. That, that is the thing. But this is, again, a new mold for 2019, and this one is orange. I don't know what the significance of these are, but I imagine they'll be pretty important for the story. Also, one last thing to notice, this set does come with a whole bunch of extra uh, translucent yellow, like, sword pieces and stuff. This is a pretty common thing throughout all the sets, but just thought it was a quick thing to note. So overall, for $30, this is a really, really solid set. The dragon itself is really nice. It is obviously a little bit you know, scaled down, especially the torso section, which I personally, I don't mind the torso that much, but as I said, I think there will be a ton of people that will be a little bit annoyed that it is so thin. Minifigures, again, pretty solid. Uh, Emperor Unagami really makes this a pretty great set, just in the fact that you can get the main villain in such a cheap way. And just overall, it's pretty solid all the way around. But that is pretty much it for my thoughts on the uh, Empire Dragon. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, see you guys later.